Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm here today with Consuelo, who was nominated as one of SOAS's most inspirational women for 2021. Uh, we're interviewing three candidates who were nominated by the SOAS community and asking them a bit about their journeys. So Consuelo, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us uh, how you moved to London and tell us about the Justice for Cleaners movement that you're involved in? Okay, entonces, bueno, mi nombre es Consuelo Moreno. Eh, soy limpiadora. My name is Consuelo Moreno and I'm a cleaner and representative of the cleaners in SOAS. I've been working for 17 years in this university and it all began in 2006 when I began with other two, with other two peers campaign Justice for Cleaners. At that time it was called Justice for Cleaners, but now it is known as the Justice for Workers campaign. I've always believed that change is possible and it's doable and makeable. Um, because we deserve better work conditions, and that's how the campaign started under those values. So the Justice for Workers campaign started because we were people that worked for this uni and that basically guaranteed a protection and some healthy environment for the community, but at the same time, we were invisible. Our problems were not known, were not heard, the uh, oppression that we were suffering. And that's why this campaign began. And this, that's when we also became part of Unison as, a, as unionized workers. And after that, a lot of like students just uh, joined the cause and then academics also became aware of it. And now we, enjoy a lot of uh, support from all these people. The beginning of this campaign was really hard because when we started organizing the university as long with the company that outsourced the cleaners at that time, ISS, responded uh, with a with the deportation of eight of the cleaners at that time who were called into a meeting without knowing what was happening and then immigration officers came in and took some people and deported some people <clears throat> among those people a woman who was uh, pregnant of eight months of course this is totally unjust because for example if we got sick if we if we were feel ill we had to go to work Otherwise, you will lose that day, that day uh, from your wage and your salary. We also had very, very short vacations. And then again, because our wages and our payment is the lowest in all of SOAS, it, we had to like work over hours and more than we should be able to survive in a country as expensive as is the UK, and particularly in London. So having vacations that weren't uh, long enough it was really detrimental for us and to see our families because of course we had to work so long and so much during our normal period that we didn't see them enough. And then not having enough vacations to see them was also like detrimental. This is why our main objective was always to get an in-house contract. A lot of people thought that this was going to be impossible, but we remained constant and we didn't allow ourselves to get defeated in this. It was a really long campaign on, for the objective to get an in-house contract. We were the first university that was against the outsourcing of labor. And this was a lot of work with the help of the community in long campaigns, occupations, protests, etc. And we finally managed to get the in-house contract in August 2018, being a, apparently the only one university in the UK that managed to end the outsourcing scheme in all of its departments. So that included food, the cleaners, and all the other workers in SOAS. Creo la única universidad en Inglaterra que rompió con el esquema de terciarización en todos sus departamentos. 
mantenimiento, restaurante, securities y limpiadores. Eh, bueno, lo importante de, de este logro, de esta victoria de nuestra campaña. The most important thing about the, this victory of the campaign is that not only we demonstrated that it is possible, that, that we could do it, but that change is attainable. And of course, the uh, campaign has worked as an inspiration for a lot of different uh, working sites. Some of them have already managed to get an in-house contract like King's College London, Goldsmith University, but we still remain as an inspiration for other units who are concentrating on the struggle to also get an in-house contract. And to all the other, of course, labor sites that continue to fight for this. That's so amazing to hear. I can tell that I can see why you've been nominated for this um, this opportunity. I can see how inspirational you must be to so many people and uh, also at the SOAS community and further. So I'd be interested to hear what you wanted to do when you were younger, uh, growing up, particularly as a migrant. I think your experience must be very interesting. Uh -huh. A ver, bueno, realmente eh, fue, pues, It was really a normal childhood, very common with a, a very united parents and, and loving parents. I had a dad who also used to participate in, in unions back in my home country. He told me a lot about when someone proposed something and when you want to achieve something, you can always get it with perseverance. As an adolescent, as a teenager, it was also like very normal. I managed to finish my secondary school and even took some semesters in law school back in my home country. That's amazing to hear. Um, so as you know, this is for International Women's Day. So I'd love to hear, have you faced any barriers specifically as a woman in your field? Eh, bueno, no, eh, en mi lucha realmente yo tengo que agradecer, eh, es, una, es un punto que puedo... Basically, in, in, in the struggle, really, I only have to be grateful for all the support I, I have received so far the, in, from the students, men and women in, in SOAS and the academic and all, basically all of the community that have supported this campaign. More than barriers, what we have encountered is a lot of support from, from the community, even from uh, newspapers like The Guardian, who published what was happening and how the campaign was relevant. And that helped a lot in, in giving us more, more space. Uh, so it was like a lot of support rather than barriers. On the other side, the only barrier that I have faced, not, not much as in my gender as a woman, but rather as the leader of this campaign has been from, from management who have basically opposed many, many of the demands that we have proposed to them. So I guess our final question is, I know we've heard a lot about your leadership for the Justice for Workers movement and it's so admirable to see what you've been doing. So of all the moments, what are you most proud of achieving? A ver, yo me siento muy orgullosa de como mujer. Eh, a ver, I feel very proud as a woman to have been able to eh, contribute get some change into the SOAS community to get better terms and benefits and conditions of, of the workplace. Even beyond my womanhood, being an immigrant, I feel very proud of being able to come to a play to a country like the UK from a country like Colombia and being able to basically uh, support and give a bit of my own into this community. It's all about just uh, taking a seed and planting the, that, that seed of the struggle into all of the students that have helped and that have supported this campaign. I do wish that when these students uh, finish their university journeys and they have to go into their workplace, they continue to carry this seed of the struggle and experience into their own workplaces and that this translates into them being better people.
Ese es mi orgullo. Absolutely. I think that's a great place to end it then. Thank you so much for um, talking to me today. It's been a genuine honor. And I know that I don't speak for myself when I say that everyone at the SOAS community is so grateful for all that you've done. So thank you so much. Okay, bye.